I'm going to call it the variables project. And I'm going to create a new class called variables. And I'm going to come in here. And let's see. Let me make the fonts a little bit bigger. Mr. Burnett, can you read that from the back, sir? OK, great. And uh, Ms. Mullen, I'm going to ask you to go turn the lights off for me. Thank you, Miss. And today's date is 9 1. And I'm going to come back over here. Oops. So I had created this variable and Mitty had told us it was going to produce a 10. And I just want to show you that is indeed the case. You see, there's the 10 right there. You see that, right? Okay, let's go back in here and talk about this statement for a second. In Java, there are two things you need to do to use a variable. You need to declare it and you need to initialize it to a value. You can do those both on the same line like this, or you can do it over two different lines. You can go like this, and that works also. So you can see here, I've declared the variable. I told the compiler, hey, I want this variable, re reserve some memory for me to create this variable, and I want to call it n. And now here you can see I'm initializing the value by putting a value in it for the first time. That sets it to seven, and this is going to work exactly the same way as before. So if I run it again, you can see it still produces the same answer. I'm going to check this clear screen at method call so that each time it runs, it clears the screen and I only get one answer. Okay, so in some programming languages like Python and App Inventor, when you create a variable, you can change what you store in that variable. See, I created this variable called n. In Java, Java is what is known as a strictly typed language. What that means is when you create a variable, the data type that you tell it at the beginning is always going to be the data type that it has for its entire life. That means that this variable n, once I do this to it, can only hold integers. If you try to put a decimal number in here, you'll see that it won't let you. See the red red underlining? Likewise, if you try to put a string in here like that, it won't let you do that either. So Java, when you're when you declare a variable, you declare what kind of data it holds and you can't change it anymore. The way you want to think about variables is it's a box. It holds stuff. And in Java, once you create the box and tell it what goes in the box, nothing else can go in the box. This box holds integers. The other thing you want to recognize about variables is that variables are like living things. They're born, they live for a while, and then they die. When they die is when they encounter one of these closing curly brackets. So, for example, if I tried to access the variable n over here, you'll see that the compiler won't let me because it'll be like, I don't know about any n because n has already died by the time you got to this closing curly bracket. So, remember, variables, they're born, they live for a while, and they die. Could I use the variable n over here? Let's see. Use the variable up here. Why not? That's right. Why not? Um, not, not no, sir. N is an integer. Why can't I use it up here, though? See, look, I can use it down here. See, it doesn't mind that, but it won't let me well, use it. Not right. It doesn't exist yet. You should know, by the way, that not all languages work like this. Other languages like JavaScript, 
as long as you declare the variable anywhere, you can use it even before you declare it, okay? But Java doesn't work like that. In Java, you have to declare your variables before you use them. I'm going to introduce you to some other data types now. This is how we create a decimal number. Like that. And you'll notice that if I try to print the decimal number, it prints it. See that? And here, so here is an integer. I'm going to put some comments in here to describe the differences. And now what I'm going to do. Let me just go back to initializing and all on the same. It's a much better idea, unless you possibly can't for some reason, to declare and initialize on the same line. That's what you want to do. You want to declare and initialize on the same line. Okay, last, next one I'm going to show you is going to be a Boolean. Like that. Okay, and I'm going to print that one now. you can see that it's got the value of true. The Boolean only holds two values. I've showed you what one of them are. Mr. Abello, any guess what the other value you can put in here is? That's right, sir, so you can go false. And this would be a good time for me to talk a little bit about why some of these are red and some of these are blue and some of these are black. So if it turns into a different color other than black, what it means is that it's a reserved word in Java. That means that you can't use that word to name one of your variables. You can't go like this. Look, you can't go int false equals seven. You can't do that because false has a special meaning in the language. You can't use it as a variable name. See that? Likewise, you can't go like this. Because once again, Boolean is a reserved word. So you can't use it as the name of a variable. You can go like this. Okay. Or you can go like this. Then that's a different word. Notice that the capitalization matters, right? So this variable is completely different from this variable. Okay, that's perfectly that's perfectly acceptable. It's not a good idea, but it will treat these two variables as completely different. So we've talked about integers, we've talked about decimal numbers, and we've talked about Boolean being true or false. Okay, and there are some other ones. Now, you notice that these, this is a really bad idea. You can see that these are all red because these are variable types that are built into the language. Okay. When we have a variable type that's built into the language, those are called primitives. Primitives. Primitives are variables that Java knows about, Java variable types, excuse me, that Java knows about because when Java was created, the people who made Java said, okay, we're going to have variable types that are integers, we're going to have decimal numbers, and we're going to have Booleans. I think these are the only primitives. Mr. Roth, am I forgetting any uh, for CSA? I think, so. I think these are the only ones you need to know for your CSA exam. There are some other ones, but we don't talk about them so much in this course. Now, Java also has another type of variable, which is called an object variable and you create objects using classes. So let's look at that for a second. Like that. And you can see that string did not change colors. You see that? Didn't change colors. You see that this Boolean is red, double is red, integer is red, because these three are primitives. String. Thing is a class. 
You can tell it's a class for two reasons. First, it's black. What's the other way that you can tell? What's the difference in the way that string is written versus the way that Boolean, double, and int are written? Let's see here. Mr. Gabe, sir, what's different about it? It's capitalized. Classes in Java are capitalized. Primitives are not. Now, I mentioned there are classes here and objects. This is a class, string. S is the object of that class. People get confused between objects and classes. It's extremely simple. A class is a cookie recipe. An object is a cookie. See the difference? A class is a set of instructions on how to build something. And the object is the thing that you've built using those instructions. So the string is a class, but it's a class that was not written when Java was originally invented. It was written by somebody later. And string is a class that is automatically included when we compile because it's in one of the important Java libraries. But in Java, you can make your own classes. In fact, that's what we're going to spend most of our time doing, making our own data types, our own classes. But string is one that is built using the Java library, and you get that one for free. I'm going to show you another way to make a string now. Okay, that is a different way of making a string. What I'm saying is I want to make a string. Here is the object name of the string. And here are the instructions for making the string. I'm saying to the compiler, please make me a brand new string and load it up with DEF. Now, you might be asking, why would I do this when I can simply do this? And in a couple of weeks, we'll talk about the difference between these two. Right now, you just need to understand that there are two different ways to make strings. Now, let's try something else. Can anyone guess what's going to print here? I have one string, and I have another string, and I'm trying to add them. What do you think it means to try to add two strings together? Mr. Burnett, any idea what that means, sir? So what do you think we'll print here, sir? OK, so when you use the plus sign between two strings, you're putting them side by side. One on the left, one on the right, putting them together. Let's run it. And you can see here that this false, by the way, is from down here. Let me just turn this off. Here's a quick way to turn a piece of code off. You just turn it into a comment like that, and it won't run right now. And uh, let's go back here, and you can see. Let me run it again for you. You can see that when you add two strings together, it puts them side by side. We're going to take a five-minute break and give you a chance to get up and walk around the classroom a little bit, and then we'll pick up in just five minutes. Next thing I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go back to your RuneStone textbook and log on to the West Hill CSA course. And I'd like you to complete section 1.1 for me. So I want you to do all of these things here from 111 to 117. Please do those now. You can work on these by yourself. You can chat with your colleagues or have them help you while you're working on them. But our goal today is to get through this part of the textbook. If you've already finished this part, you can do some other part that you haven't finished. But I'm going to give you a few minutes now to get used to this rune stone. Remember, 20 minutes a day, four or five times a week. 
Mr. Sherman, can you close that door for me, sir? Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to continue our discussion now about basic arithmetic in Java. And we are going to go back to some of our examples here. And we're going to just finish up discussing this plus operator because there's some intricacies here that will confuse you. And uh, these intricacies will sometimes be tested on the AP exam, unfortunately. So it's important that you understand these little traps that Java sets for you. So if I go like this, if I go, let me see if I can clean this up a little bit. Let me create two integers. And if I go like this, and I print C here, let's get our volunteer base back here and ask Mr. Owen, do you still have your Bobcats t-shirt, Owen? Maybe you can model it for us on Friday, if you remember. What, what, uh, what city is the Bobcats, by the way? You don't know, do you? That's OK. All right, that's all right. Uh, Owen, what's going to print here? Yes, sir. 10 is going to print again. So let's compile and run this puppy. OK, you can see that there's the 10. Now, you can see here that when we print two, we add two integers, the answer comes out to an integer. What do you think would happen if I turn one of these into a decimal number? And here, if I went and just did this, do you think that an integer is going to print, or do you think a decimal number is going to print? Let me ask Miss Mullen. That's right. A decimal number is going to print. So let's try that out. You see that, right? Now, if I was to store the result here first, will this compile right now? Um, Mr. Bello, will this compile, sir? Tell me why. So how about now? Will it compile now? Sir, what's missing here? Take a look. That C was never declared. So now I need to declare it. And my question is, can I declare it as a, a double or an integer or either one? What do you think here? Uh, Mr. Akhtan, what do you think? It has to be a decimal number. Look what happens if I try to put an integer in here. You see, it doesn't like that because we just decided a few seconds ago because of what Ms. Mullen said is that when you add an integer to a decimal, the result comes out to be a decimal. So if I try to squeeze it into an integer, look what happens. It says, hey, I don't, I don't wanna lose some of my, my uh, 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 some of my conversion decimal digits or whatever by converting from a double to an int. Uh, you need to put a double here. Now, um, now it'll work. Now, let's go back to the other thing we had here where we had uh, classes, and I'm going to go back to strings. I'm going to go string A equals ABC and string B equals DEF. And I'm going to say string C equals A plus B. And then I'm going to print C. What's happening here? Oops. I can't reuse that. Notice, by the way, I'm glad I made this mistake. You see, I tried to reuse the same variable names. It doesn't let me. You got to create brand new variable names. Let me just get rid of these. We don't need these at the moment. So now what's going to print here? Let's see. Mr. Diego, what's going to print here, sir, when I use the plus sign on two strings? Okay, so it's going to just put them side by side. This process is known as concatenation. Concatenation, that's when I take two strings and put them side by side. 
So let's run it. And you can see it, it prints them side by side. Now, my next question is what happens if I try to print a number and a string? So imagine here I have the number and I have the string. And my question is, First of all, do you think it'll compile? Miss Nuha, what do you think? Strangely, it will, but I can definitely understand why you might think that. I mean, how can we add a string and a number together? Seems kind of odd, but we can. My question is, what do you think is gonna print here, Miss Nuha? Take a guess. Side by side, that's right. So what's going to print? It's going to print 7ABC. So here, you can see it'll print 7ABC. And I can also do this in the other order, like that. And what's going to print this time, Mr. Diego? ABC7 this time. So let me show you that. You can see it prints ABC7. Now, let me show you something that you're not expecting. Okay, so what I want you to do now is turn to the person on your left or right and discuss what do you think is going to get printed here. That's right. It's going to print the sum is 75. Let's have a look at that oddity. And you can see that. And we want to talk about why that is. Now, you might be, have been expecting it to print the sum is 12. Mr. Dominic, any idea what I need to do here to make it print the sum is 12? What do I need to do to this expression? Sir, I want to force it to do this first. In math, when you want to force some operation to happen before another one, what do you add, sir? Do you remember? Remember your PEMDAS? Parentheses. So if I put the parentheses in here, now it will work. See, now it works. But my question is now, why didn't it work before without the parentheses? Let's see if I can get another volunteer, Mr. Gabe. Sir, can you tell me what was happening here? Okay, it executes this plus sign before this plus sign because according to the PEMDAS rules, addition is evaluated left to right if there are no parentheses. So first it does this. And we already decided that a string and an integer result in a string. So the part highlighted in blue here turns into a string. And then it takes that string and it tries to add this part. But a string and an integer get concatenated again. So this whole thing turns out to get concatenated. If we want to do the addition first, we need to put parentheses here. So that's pretty much all I have for you for today. There's about five minutes left at this period, and you can enjoy those five minutes. I'm going to pick up the next time we're together, which is on Tuesday, and talk about multiplying and dividing because those don't work the way you expect either. But the main lesson for you to walk away from today is when you add two strings together, you get a string. When you add two integers together, you get an integer. When you add a string and an integer, you get a string. And that creates this. Before you go, I'm going to give you one last question. And I'm going to ask, what's going to print this time? Please discuss with the person next to you. Sorry, I forgot that plus sign. Okay, try again.
Mr. Baker, sir, this thing loves you. Mr. Baker, what's going to print? 12 is the sum. It'll do this plus sign before this one. Integer plus integer is integer. So now you can see this time it works fine. I don't need the parentheses. OK, 